worship your name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for the opportunity to speak your word again today. Glory, honor, and adoration be unto you. Father, as I open my mouth again today, send forth your word with power. Let it save the souls of the children of men into your kingdom. Let it transform their lives to become excellent and fruitful children of the living God. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. This is Light from Genesis, chapter 3, episode number 4. Light from Genesis, chapter 3, episode number 4. Hallelujah. We are going to read again from verse 1. Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, then she took of the fruit thereof, and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Hallelujah. Here we see something in this verse 7 that the natural tendency of every normal human being is to want to cover his or her nakedness. So anyone who has a different tendency from covering his or her nakedness is no longer normal. He has become an abnormal person. Adam and Eve were the first human beings to live on the earth. Adam first, Eve followed. But even without any teacher, they had a natural instinct. The moment they saw that they were naked, they wanted to cover their nakedness. That is the normal attitude of every homo sapiens, every human being in the race of Adam. So the tendency of some people today to expose their nakedness is abnormal. And it shows that they are suffering from depraved minds. They are suffering from depravity of mind. All human beings today who like to expose their nakedness for whatever reason, whether at the beach, whether because they are on the sports field, or they are performing artists, operating in a certain place, or any other reason. Whatever might be the reason, that makes any human being to desire to expose his or her nakedness today is not acceptable before God. That tendency is evil and is a result of depravity of the mind. It shows such a mind is depraved, has been polluted with immorality, has been polluted with satanic power, is no longer a normal human mind. Hallelujah. Somebody was saying he knows a tribe where people don't wear clothes. And he attributes it to primitivity. It's because they are primitive, they are not educated. That's not why. It's because of depravity of mind. Adam and Eve here were the first human beings on the earth. Nothing can be more primitive than that. But yet they knew that it was improper. Instinct in them told them it was improper for them to expose their nakedness. And they sowed fig leaves to cover their nakedness. Somebody also spoke of a place where 
because of sacrifices and covenants they have had with demons, they don't wear clothes. I can understand that. Their minds have been depraved by demonic power. So they are no longer normal in their human thinking because of the covenant they have made with Satan. Whatever may be the reason. Anywhere you see human beings who are naked, it's not primitivity, it's depravity. No matter how primitive somebody is, any human being is, he likes and he has a natural tendency to cover his or her nakedness. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read that in verse in the Weymouth translation. And just as they had refused to continue to have a full knowledge of God, so it was to so it was to utterly worthless minds that God gave them up for them to do things which should not be done. Let's read it in the Montgomery's New Testament. And just as they refused to continue to retain God in their knowledge, so did God cast them out to an outcast mind to do those things which are indecent. Hallelujah. It is indecent to expose your nakedness. So women and men today who love, who like to expose their nakedness is because they are suffering from indecency of mind, depravity of mind, pollution, satanic pollution has been injected into their minds. So they don't know any longer. They don't feel ashamed if they expose their nakedness. They think it's fun. That's because Satan has polluted their mind with indecency, with depravity. All who do this will be rejected from the kingdom of God. They will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. So if you have this habit of exposing your nakedness, you need to repent from it today. Some women will deliberately sew their dresses to expose their breasts. They make it so low in the chest that their breasts show outside. To everybody, free show. That's a shame. Some will slit their skirts to the extent that even when they are walking, their buttocks will be showing on one side. That's a big shame. This is depravity of mind. Satanic pollution in their minds, in their souls, is what make them to do these things shamelessly. Hallelujah. Verse 29 begins by saying, they were overflowing with every kind of iniquity, depravity, greed, and malice. Hallelujah. Let's read it in the Amplified Bible. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or consider Him worth knowing as their Creator, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do things which are improper and repulsive until they were filled, permeated, saturated with every kind of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. So we can see that the desire to expose your nakedness is as a result of satanic pollution. And if you have this habit, you better know that Satan has polluted your mind. And you are suffering from depravity of mind. And you need to cry to God to deliver you immediately before it's too late. Hallelujah. Another thing we want to bring out here is, do not meditate on anything offered to you by Satan or by the world or by people of the world, or by agents and children of darkness. If you do, you will be hypnotized, you will be seduced, and you will start to believe the lie or the pollution. And it's very likely it's going to overcome you, like it overcame Eve and Adam. If Eve never gave it a second thought, the moment the serpent said it, if she cast it out immediately, that would have been the end. But she stopped to think about it. Never stop to think about any offer Satan is trying to give you. Or any suggestion he's trying to present before you. Reject it. Cast it out immediately. Hallelujah. Do not allow yourself to gravitate towards what God has forbidden for you. Once you know something is forbidden by God for you, never allow yourself to gravitate or be attracted towards it. Turn the other way. If it tries to attract you or anyone tries to get you attracted to it, turn away from such people. Turn away from such things. Hallelujah. Another thing we want to bring out here is that this problem happened because the woman was engaged in discussion with a stranger. It is advisable that women should not get engaged with serious discussion with strangers without the knowledge of their husbands. I'm not saying a woman cannot greet a stranger or talk to a stranger at all, but do not get involved. Like sitting down, having a conference, Discussing anything with a stranger without letting your husband know. 
Suppose Eve had called Adam when the serpent came into the garden. The serpent would not have been able to deceive the woman because the serpent knew it would be a tough thing to deceive Adam. That was why he decided to, to go for Eve because he was able to figure it out that that would be easier. Hallelujah. As a married woman, anything anybody is discussing with you, open it up to your husband. Whether the discussion happened at work, it happened in a vehicle, it happened on a trip, on a journey, make sure you tell your husband where you get home. Even if possible, you can give your husband a call so that he knows what is going on between you and anyone, whosoever, even if it's your boss at work. And it's also a good thing for men to do the same. In the marital life, there should be no secrets. There should be no keeping of secrets. There should be no keeping of secrets. The Bible says both of them were naked together and they were not ashamed. That means between themselves. The nakedness together show, shows unity and openness. They were open to one another. They were not ashamed among themselves, but they were ashamed to let other people see them. As a married person, there should be no secret you keep from your wife or from your husband. The more the secrets you keep from your spouse, the more unhealthy and unstable your marriage becomes. God never intended that married couples should keep secrets from themselves. You have no business hiding your phone from your husband or from your wife. There should be nothing in your phone, excuse me, there should be nothing in your phone or your email that your husband or your wife cannot see. There should be no secrets. There should be no email anybody has sent to you that you tell your husband you don't need to see. I don't want you to see. No. You are married and you are to be united absolutely, not partially. The only thing that can permit any kind of secret to be kept is if it's a matter of profession and vows, professional vows, like as a medical doctor or as a military person or as a person who keep top government secrets or secret information or documents, you have been made to sign or, or make a vow or, or take an oath that you will not divulge such information. For example, as a doctor, you are not supposed to divulge the information of somebody's head to other people. Secrets you can keep from your spouse can only be permissible on such grounds of professional ethics. And such things will not even be the business of you and your spouse. So it's not even your business. It's somebody else's business. But as for things that concern you and concern your life, your spouse's life, there should be no secret that you keep from your wife or from your husband. You should not be nervous if your husband picks your phone and looks at what's inside and reads the message. You reads the messages or mails people have been sending to you. You should not be nervous. You should feel at home because you are not supposed to keep any secret. And vice versa. If your wife picks up your phone or looks at your email, you should not be nervous as a man. Your husband picks up your phone and looks at your text messages, your emails. As a woman, you should not be nervous and you should not object. There should be no objection because there should be no secret. It's not permissible in Christian marriage to keep secrets from one another. It's not permissible. The unity that the Bible prescribes is to be total and absolute. Absolute unity. Absolute openness and honesty to each other. Absolute openness and honesty to each other. That's the prescription of the Holy Scriptures. So if you have been doing contrary to this in your marriage, it's time to repent. Repent today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Hallelujah. Our time is up for today. We have to stop here for today. Father, we thank you for the word of God we have had. Father, we thank you for the word you have sent out today. What are the word in the hearts of all the hearers? Let it save their souls into your kingdom. Let it make them excellent children of the Most High God. Grace never to forget the word you have had today. Lord, pour it upon them in Jesus' name. Let the word transform their lives for the better. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. This Word of Life program is coming to you through the mouth of God's servant, Uluwa Bamishi Akinduru of the Triumphant Church of Jesus Christ at 66 in Lagos, Abeokuta Expressway, Abekoko, Ifo, Ogun State, Nigeria. For further Christian life help, contact 0805-501-6597, 0805-501-6597 by SMS or WhatsApp, or email uluwabamishi akinduro at gmail.com, O-L-U-W-A-B-A-M-I-S-E-A-K-I-N-D-U-R-O at gmail.com, O-L-U-W-A-B-A-M-I-S-E-A-K-I-N-D-U-R-O a-K-I-N-D-U-R-O at gmail.com. You can also call 003-842-4075, 003-842-4075 or 003-695-4678, 003-695-4678. Copies of this short sermon and other longer sermons in English language only can be sent to you free of charge by WhatsApp or email if you request for them. Join us for this Word of Life program, same day of the week, same time every week. Our Sunday morning service starts at 9 a.m. You are invited to fellowship with us. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen and amen.